Shalom and good evening to all my friends and my spiritual family members, my brothers and sisters in the faith of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Jake Hilton here with the Sword of Yehovah Ministries, and I welcome you to tonight's live video stream family scripture study. Psalm 143. Psalm 143, I invite you to turn there with me, open up the word of Yehovah, unsheathe that sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and turn to Psalm 143 with me. It is a psalm of David, yet another one of these beautiful psalms of prophet King David, where we see the heart of this incredible servant of the Almighty. We see his heart and how he has a heart that longs, that yearns for God. He has a heart that hungers and thirsts for the righteousness of Yehovah. And because he has that longing, that yearning, that, that insatiable hunger and thirst for the Almighty, the Almighty, Yehovah, honors David, honors his servant, brings him out of his distresses, brings him out of his troubles, brings him out of his tribulations, offers him mercy, grace, compassion, forgiveness, and prospers him in accordance with his loving kindness. We read yesterday... In Psalm 142, also connecting it with Psalm 57, how David, fleeing for his life from wicked King Saul, eventually ends up in a cave. And he's there in this cold, deep, dark cave, damp cave, hiding from the king, hiding to save his own life. In this Psalm, Psalm 143, even though it is not acknowledged in the title that this was a psalm written while he was in that cave, he makes reference to it. He makes reference to dwelling in darkness just as, just as those that dwell in the heart of the earth, the dead. Verse 3, like those who have been long dead. That's what David is going through right now. That is the valley, the deep valley of the shadow of death that he is walking through right now. But David is that man, that righteous man of God, that no matter what season of his life that he's going through, he praises God, he sings to God, he hopes in God, he trusts in Yehovah and in none other. And because he does that, because he draws near to the Father, the Father draws near to him and saves him out of his darkness. Psalm 143, a psalm of David. Let's get right into this. Hear my prayer, O Yehovah. Give ear to my supplications. The same way that he started uh, the, the previous two psalms, actually. Uh, Psalm 141, similar wording. Yehovah, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Verse, uh, Psalm 142, starting out. Verse 1, I cry out to Yehovah with my voice. With my voice to Yehovah, I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. 143, hear my prayer, O Yehovah. Give ear to my supplications. Give, give ear to my pleadings. As I am pleading with you, I am begging you. I am seeking your face just as you have commanded me to do so. Now I say that, and I have to turn to... Seek my face, one of my favorite psalms. Here we go. Psalm 
Psalm 27, verse 8, a psalm of David. David says, When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Yehovah, I will seek. This is who David is. He is seeking the face of the Father, pleading, yearning, longing for, hungering and thirsting after God. In your faithfulness, answer me, and in your righteousness. In other words, according to your faithfulness, as you are so faithful and true to your word, you are always true, you cannot lie, it is impossible for God to lie. So according to your faithfulness and according to your righteousness, answer my cries, answer my pleadings, answer my supplications. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no one living is righteous. That's a good one. That's a really good one. E even our Lord Yeshua acknowledged that truth. Rich young ruler says to rich young ruler says to Yeshua, "Good master." Yeshua says, "Why do you call me good? For there are none that are good. There are none who are defined as good, except God only, except Yehovah." God my Father. There are in your sight, in the sight of Yehovah, no one living is righteous. No one living is that definition of righteous, of good, of purity, of holiness. Why? Because we have all sinned and we have all fallen short of the glory of Yehovah. Yehovah, praise be to his name, has provided a way by his awesome power through the gift of his son Yeshua that we can be made righteous, that we can be made holy, that we can have all of our sins, all of our trespasses, all of our transgressions and debts to the Father as we are in debt to him. We can have all of it washed from us. Our record of debt with the Father cancelled by the sinless blood of Yeshua. But, without being covered by the blood of Yeshua, you are not righteous. You are not good. You are not holy. You are fallen. You are of the flesh. You are mortal. You are finite. You are a sinner. And the condemnation of death and hell is upon you. Note how I said, without being covered by the blood of Yeshua. If you are covered by the blood of Yeshua, then you are covered. Kafar in the Hebrew, you are atoned for. Covered, sheltered, and protected by righteousness, by holiness, by purity by sinlessness so that all of our sins those things were nailed to the cross with Christ but it's still up to us it is still our responsibility to prepare ourselves to take the animal and put it on the altar to take the flesh and nail it to the cross with Christ Christ by the power of the Father has made the way open to us. But we still have to make the choice to walk that path. He's not going to walk it for us. He's not going to he's not going to you know pick us up and carry us all the way into heaven. We need to as he says the invitation is to come and follow me. I have led the way up this straight and narrow path. I have cleared the path for you, and I will help you and empower you and enable you and lead you and guide you. But you still need to walk it. Walk this path. Follow me. This path leads to everlasting life.
But this is just what we, this is what David acknowledged. This is what Yeshua acknowledged. This is what all need to know and acknowledge. That in the sight of Yehovah, no one on this earth is righteous. Uh, account named Black Hole, my dear friend, says, Yehovah make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. God commands that we seek for that which will please him, that his face shine or smile upon what we do, that his face and grace be revealed. Amen. When Yehovah said to David, and he says to all of us, Seek my face, our heart should say, Your face, Yehovah, I will seek. And in seeking the face of Yehovah, you will be covered with righteousness, the blood of Yeshua. Verse 3, for the enemy, for the enemy, the enemy being Hasatan, but Hasatan has got a whole bunch of servants that, that work for him and serve him and love him, both Spirit enemies and mortal enemies, all enemies of righteousness, they have persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. Okay, pause. Wow, we're going to go into the spirit in this, this word right here. He, the enemy, has made me dwell in darkness, like those who have long been dead. Now, which enemy is David thinking about when he wrote this? More likely than not, he's thinking about Saul. He's thinking about mortal King Saul, wicked Saul, who wants David dead. That would be the literal, that would be the surface of the word, that would be the letter. Let's get into the spirit. Which enemy is the true enemy of all righteousness? Hasatan, Lucifer, the devil. He who was a murderer from the beginning because there is no truth in him. And for those who heed Satan's voice and you give in to his temptations, and you fall into sin and wickedness. Yeshua says in John chapter 8, He who commits sin is a slave of sin. You commit sin, you're a slave of sin. You don't follow Yeshua, also John chapter 8, this is verse 12. If you don't follow Yeshua, then you are not going to be walking in light. You will be walking in darkness. He... The enemy, Hasatan, has made me dwell in darkness. As I have been a slave of sin, I dwell in darkness. Like those who have long been dead, if you are in sin, you are dead. You're dead. The punishment of death and hell is upon you. You are of the flesh. You will die. You will experience the first death, physical death. You will also experience the second death, the true death, spiritual death. You're going to be booted out of the presence of Almighty God on Judgment Day. Almighty God and His Son Yeshua will look right at you and they're going to say, I don't know you. I never knew you. So depart from me, you that practice lawlessness. You that is a slave to sin, to hell, to darkness. You are a servant of Hasatan. You go be with your master. You don't belong here. You don't belong here with righteousness, with holiness, with purity. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. But, going back to what I said before, seek Yehovah's face. 
and to seek the face of the Father is... Account name Black Hole, you nailed it right on the head. Ha hammer, meat, nail. Awesome. God commands that we seek for that which will please him, that his face shine or smile upon what we do, that his face and grace be revealed. Yes, absolutely. You seek the face of the Father, you are going to keep his commandments. You are going to walk that straight and narrow path to life, everlasting life. You're going to be obedient to the Father's law, doing the Father's will in this life. And when you do that, God brings you out by his right hand, by his son Yeshua, he brings you out of darkness, out of death, out of hell out of the snares of the enemy. We got to read that one again. Verse 3. In the spirit, for the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. For dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. In the day you eat of the fruit of that tree, you will surely die. Thus says Yehovah God. You sin, you break my law, you will be, your life will be crushed to the ground. He, the enemy, has made me dwell in darkness, like those who have long been dead. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. I'm troubled. Oh yeah. Absolutely. You should be troubled. You should be troubled. This is one of my biggest beefs with mainstream Christianity. You want to hear one of my biggest beefs? Well, whether you want to hear it or not, you're going to hear it. One of my biggest beefs is that so many Christians, they focus almost exclusively on the New Testament, on the Gospel. And what does gospel mean? It means good news. And it is good news. The gospel is wonderful, beautiful news. It is the perfect news. It's wonderful. There's nothing wrong with focusing on the gospel. But in today's world, when the vast majority of people don't understand the bad news, you're not going to understand the good news. If you don't understand the bad news that happened in Genesis, you're not going to understand the good news that happens in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You cannot focus exclusively on the New Testament. You are only going to get half the story if you do. You have to focus also on the Old Testament. You have to go through the Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures, the God breathed word. You have to know that you are in a distressful place. You're in a bad situation. You 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 are a fallen being and you're destined for destruction. You need to be saved. That that's the problem with only focusing on the New Testament. So many people don't even realize they need a savior. So many people, they, they don't even realize that they are in prison. They don't realize that they are slaves to sin. And if you don't know that you're in prison and that you're a slave, you're never going to even think to be set free. You're never even going to think to try and get out of prison, to escape safely from the grasp of the enemy. David says in verse 4, My heart within me is distressed by this. My spirit is overwhelmed within me. You have, to, you have to understand the bad news in order to understand and appreciate and praise God Almighty for the good news, for the gospel. Whew! So... 
focus on focus on the whole word of God. That's what I say. All right? Focus on the whole word and that's where you're going to get the full message. I remember the days of old. I meditate, I ponder on all your works. I muse, muse, muse to think, to ponder. I muse on the work of your hands. And I've said this in previous teachings, I say again because it is important to muse, to think, to ponder. In the English language, if you put an A on the front of it, it becomes amuse. And it becomes the opposite of what muse means. Just as a theist, a theist is a believer in God. You put an A on the front of it, it becomes atheist, someone who does not believe in God. Muse is to think, to ponder, to meditate on the Word of God. Amuse is to not think, to not ponder, to not meditate. There are a whole lot of people that love to be amused in this world. Do not seek to, do not seek amusement, seek amusement, if that's a word, but you get what I'm saying. I spread out my hands to you, David says. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Salah. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Like a desert thirsts for rain, my soul longs for Yehovah. The NIV says, I spread out my hands to you, my soul thirsts for you, like a parched land. This is David. This is who David is. He hungers for Yehovah. He thirsts for Yehovah. And because he does that, because that's his attitude, because those are his actions, Yehovah will provide for him, for his servant, living water. God does not, listen closely, God does not give living water to someone who doesn't thirst for it. If you're not thirsty and you're not hungering, God will not give you water of life and bread of life. He won't. He only gives it to those who are hungering and thirsting. Oh yes, and I'm going to share some... Uh, some words with you to prove that point. Psalm 42, 1 and 2 says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Yeshua says, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. It does not say that everyone's going to be filled. No. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. John chapter 4 Verses 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said to her, the Samaritan woman, Whoever drinks of this water, this worldly physical water, will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, will never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. He says something very, very similar in a few chapters later in John chapter 7. On the, uh, John chapter 7 verses 37 and 38. On the last day, that great day of the feast, 
the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the eighth day, High Sabbath, Shemini Atzeret, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, if you thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And one of my all-time favorites from Revelation 21, verse, verse 6 and 7. Actually, we'll do 6 through 8. 6 through 8. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He does not say, I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely. Period. That's not what he says. Uh uh. He says, I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts, for him who seeks it, for him who yearns for it, for him who longs for it, for that person whose soul longs for Yehovah and for his son Yeshua like a thirsty land, like a desert, longs for the rain. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes, who overcomes the world, who overcomes sin, who overcomes the devil, who overcomes addiction, who overcomes the darkness by the grace of God, who overcomes these things, he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son or my daughter. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which, in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You've got a hunger for God. You've got a thirst for God. Your soul needs to pant after God as a deer pants for the water brooks. You have to just, it has to be who you are, everything you are. God does not honor those who lazily seek him. Yeah. What, what day is it? Oh, is it, is it Sunday? Oh, okay. I guess I, I guess I'll, I'll bring God out of the closet for just a few hours. Let's go to church, everyone. Let's go. Let's go. I call them time card punchers. Oh yeah, they'll they'll go to church. They'll you know do this and do that. Punch their time card for God. Give a few hours here, a few hours there. But that's really all they are. For a few hours a week, they'll bring God out of the closet. And then they'll put God right back in the closet saying, okay, I'm done with you until next week. God will not be put in a closet. God has no place in that house, in that temple. God wants the whole temple. God wants to fill every nook and cranny of the house. He wants to be in every room. He wants to be in your bedroom. He wants to be in the bathroom. He wants to be in every closet. He wants to be in the kitchen, in the dining room, in the living room, in the attic. He wants to be in the basement. He wants to be in the walls. He wants to be in the foundation. He wants to be on the roof. He wants to be in every aspect of your life. And for the person who wants God, in every aspect of their life, who hungers and longs for God to be in the house and in every room of the house. Ho, ho, ho. It is those people that God honors and will give to them freely 
the waters of the fountain of life because they thirst for it like a desert thirst for the rain. If you don't thirst, you're not going to get a drink. And it, it's, it's crazy to me how so many refuse the water because it's offered to all. It is offered to all, but you have to want it. You have to thirst for it. And the way that I picture it is that all mankind is wandering through a, a, a desert, wandering through a blasted and dry wasteland where there's just nothing but, but desert dunes and sand and rocky mountains and that's it. No shrubs, no trees, it's just sand and the blazing sun above you. It's hot. It's dry. You're about ready to pass out. You're exhausted. And then all of a sudden, a man appears. And he comes to you. And he's carrying a canteen full of fresh, cool, life-giving water. And he says, hey, do you want some? And most people say, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm sure. I'm sure that just over that sand dune, right over there, I'm sure there's an oasis. I I'm sure there is. I'm just going to keep going. Don't you worry about me. I'll be just fine. And then they get over that sand dune, and they look down into the valley. Oh, and they see a mirage. They see a mirage of an oasis, and they chase that mirage every day of their lives, only to find that they drink the sand, only to find death in the end, as there is no oasis in this world. The only oasis is the canteen of water that Yeshua offers, which if you take it from him, you'll find that you can take a drink out of it, and you can take another drink out of it, and you can take another drink out of it. And just like the oil that never failed, that water will never fail. You can drink of that water your entire life. And you'll be able to walk through the desert of this world carrying that canteen of life, drinking the whole way to salvation. Woo! Preaching it tonight. My goodness. Preaching it. Answer me speedily, O Yehovah. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me. Lest, if you hide, if you hide your face from me, I will be like those who go down into the pit. I will be like those who are dead. I will have no life if your face is hidden from me. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I do trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. Help me to see the path that I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Yehovah, from my enemies. In you, I take shelter. In you, I take shelter. It can also be translated as, To you, I flee. To you, I run. I run to Yehovah. I don't walk lazily. I don't meander my way to Yehovah. No, I am in a dead sprint to Almighty God. I race to the Father. I flee to you. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, one of my favorites. The name of Yehovah is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. You are safe under the, the shadow of Yehovah, under his wings. Teach me, verse 10, teach me to do your will. 
for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Or, another way it can be translated, and I feel that, I feel that this is more accurate, May your good spirit, oh, I love that. Your spirit is good? Yeah, that works. But, your, may your good spirit lead me on level ground or lead me in the land of uprightness. Level ground. Yehovah Almighty is that spirit that good spirit. None are good save God only. May your good spirit, that spirit of holiness, the Ruach HaKodesh, lead me on level ground and teach me to do your will. For not everyone who says to Yeshua, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven but only those that do the will of my Father who is in heaven. So teach me, Father, to do your will, for you are my God. May your spirit, or may your good spirit lead me in the land of uprightness. Revive me, O Yehovah, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And in your mercy, cut off my enemies. Cut off, cast off my enemies. And destroy all those who afflict my soul. For I am your servant. Beautiful. That is a beautiful, beautiful psalm. And we just, we praise God for his word. And I praise God that he has spoken tonight. The spirit of God has spoken. He's the one who's been preaching. He's the one that has been declaring the truth. We will close this family scripture study with one final verse revelation 22 verse 17 one of the i mean we're we're talking this is the very end of the bible this is only a few verses away from the final verse of the bible and it reads revelation 22 verse 17 the spirit yehovah god the spirit of holiness and the bride the bride, the one that actually walks these paths of righteousness, they say to all, Come, come, and let him who hears say, Come, the invitation is there, come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Whoever desires. That is the takeaway message. That is what we need to learn from Psalm 143. You have to desire it. You have to hunger after it. You have to thirst after it. Your soul needs to thirst for God and His righteousness just as a desert thirsts for the rain. And if you desire it, you desire life, you desire salvation, you desire the rewards, the unspeakable, unimaginable rewards that God offers to those who love Him, if you desire it, you may take the water of life freely. Amen and hallelujah. Praise be to Yehovah. Please join me in a word of prayer. Praise be to you, blessed Father in heaven, Yehovah God Almighty. We exalt you and bless your eternal name. 
We praise you, Father, and we thank you so much that you have spoken this night. We thank you, Father, that you have declared your word in ancient times, and you still declare your word to this day. We thank you, Father, that your word is true. We thank you, Father, that your word is unchanging and unchangeable, just as you, Father, are unchanging and unchangeable. We praise you for that. We praise you that you are eternal. You are the same God Almighty yesterday, today, and forever, and we can put all of our trust and our hope and our faith in you. We praise you, Father, and thank you so much for sending your word to us, your written word, which you have caused to be recorded, and the living word that you sent into this world, through which we have life. You have, you have invited us, Father, to seek your face. And so, Father, our hearts say to you, your face, O Yehovah, we will seek as we desire to drink deeply and freely from that fountain of living waters. We thank you, Father, for life. We thank you for salvation. And we thank you, Father, for the good news of your Son, Yeshua, that we can be brought out of the bad news of our fallen state. We can be brought out of darkness and sin and death and hell. We thank you, Father, that by your infinite power, awesome power through your Son, Yeshua, we can overcome all things. We pray for strength and grace to be with us so that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And this is our prayer to you, most glorious Father, pleading with you to hear our prayer and to draw near to us as we draw near to you. We pray, Father, that your face will shine upon us and that you will be gracious to us, that you will lift up your countenance upon us and give us peace. Yehovah, bless us and keep us, for we love you and desire to serve you. In Yeshua's name, amen. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining me for this evening's live video stream family scripture study tomorrow is going to be Thursday so tomorrow evening I'm actually going to be filming at night the Jeremiah teaching <clears throat> but that will be available Friday evening tomorrow we are still going to do a live video stream family scripture study so I invite you to join me tomorrow evening 6 p.m. for that and we will be covering Psalm 144. We will see you then. God bless you and keep you all. Shalom.